What's the key challenge for you over the next five years? Or, man, let me rephrase. What is your, your biggest anxiety? What's our biggest challenge going ahead? The, if you were to define one thing which may keep you awake at night. Um, look, the biggest one would be threat to funding. Uh, because the government is undertaking a review of the funding formula at the moment, Sir Ramaphosa's committee, and that might uh, go for a formula that distributes even more of the national pie to historically disadvantaged universities. There's also a review of the NISFAS formula, which is the funding for financial aid, and that is likely to work against us um, in the sense that it was historically a formula based on the race profile of a university, and in future it's going to be based on the socioeconomic profile. And so we have, in a sense, had the advantage of having more black students relative to how many poor students, and as that changes, we're going to get less money for financial aid. So how are we going to promote a framework <coughs> that the children of this country, black children in particular, are entitled to actually go to an outstanding institution which needs money? How are we going yeah. to do that then? We have to log. We, we raise a lot of money for financial aid. Uh, our financial aid program altogether is nearly 400 million rand. 100 million is, is our own money that we put in. About 100 is from NISFAS, the National Student Financial Aid Scheme. Uh, about 100 is from philanthropy and about 100 is from corporates. And uh, we need to expand that so that we can ensure that we can do a decent job. Okay. But the other challenge, so that, yes, that's, sort of that's the one challenge, yes. That's, a, that's the kind of worry that yeah. keeps me awake because that could really set us back. The challenge that I sometimes uh, feel anxious about in the sense of being responsible for providing leadership in the university is about the impact of online learning and online education globally and how that will impact on us. Because and how is it going to? Well, it could be in a number of ways. One is that our students might think that it's better to take an online course, even just for a course, than to do the course at UC, especially if they're exposed to one of those lecturers you describe with a 70% failure rate. And if, if, if MIT... You can't offers, blame them. Yeah. If MIT offers a maths course or a physics course or a chemistry course, which uh, is a good course and which we give credit for and they give credit for, we would have given credit if the student went to MIT to study that if they came back here. So why wouldn't we give the credit if they study online? Um, we may find that students take a significant part of their degree from other universities. And we've got to think what that does to the nature of our degree, whether we allow it, whether we encourage it, I mean, we are encouraging it already, for example, with postgraduate students, doctoral students who come here and who we find have certain gaps. And so they'll do a research methodology MOOC, a massive online open course, from an international university because there are too few of them for us to teach, perhaps, if it's a specialised area. And it works very well in our favour, but we're already encouraging students to take these courses. Right. My final question to you, subject to questions which may still come, what's your worst moment over the last five years? Um, my worst moment, this is revealing stuff, I'm sure the trade unions are, are hearing it. <laughs> my worst moment was um, a point in the negotiations with the Academics Union some years ago where they had already declared that they were going on strike and uh, we spent the night negotiating and, and, and finally came up with a, a solution which avoided it. But it was my worst moment because um, it certainly highlighted for me the risks and the difficulties of this sort of management. Yes. Academic, the academic community is collegial. Um, it's not one where people clock in and out. Uh, some would argue that if the academics went on strike, many people wouldn't know because they're <laughs> not here, but of course uh, you would after, after time. <coughs> but it, 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 it destroys the relationships. And other universities, case the University of Quasar Natal had this experience, other universities have had it, that a strike in the academic community pits deans against staff, heads of departments against staff, um, and it's, it's, it'll take years to fix. And so it's, it's resulted in my coming to the view that the, the situation would have to be very extreme. And in fact, I don't think that management can tolerate a strike, nor do I think that the unions, um, the, the academics union is different. And it I wasn't asking you to give me your labour relations policy going forward. I was asking what the worst moment is. Well, that, that, so that was the worst moment. It was the facing the strike and recognising what the consequences would be. Yeah. But I think we, and I think we need to 
developing uh, industrial relations policy going forward that does not that that, that avoids that at all right. costs. Okay. And then finally, what's your best moment? I suppose uh, the uh, chair of council review was a very positive affirming moment personally. It's not so much about right. the university, but personally it was an extremely okay. positive.